All right, guys, welcome to the kitchen. We are currently 13 weeks out from the Mr. Olympia. We're two weeks post Chicago, and I'm gonna walk you guys through my pre-workout meal, and then just kind of go over how I'm feeling kind of coming out of the Chicago Pro and coming into this Olympia prep. The last few weeks have been kind of a blur. It's been so hectic. I mean, I finished the show, I went right into to Toronto to hang out with the guys at HD and just kind of was cranking out content. And uh, I didn't really have the chance to get settled and really digest everything. And um, I think now I'm kind of at a point where I'm finally sitting with my thoughts here and I realized that, man, I am preparing for the Mr. Olympia, for my Olympia debut. And honestly, my rookie season, I, I, I'm blown away. You know, as much as you sit here and believe in yourself and think you can make it happen and it's the goal and you have it written down and you've conditioned yourself to believe this stuff, when it happens, it's, uh, there's really no feeling like it and there's really no words I can use to explain it. So I'm just, I'm just fucking excited. Like 12 pounds above stage weight and we've just been slowly increasing food. I've been keeping things really tight because I really don't want to veer off path too much. I want to make sure digestion stays in a good place. I don't want to be holding water. I want to maintain all the same consistent variables that we had through prep. You know, you kind of work really hard to get to that point where your body is just responding and clicking and grooving. And right now I feel like we've carried that over through this rebound really well. Um, I feel very good. I'm not holding any water. I've you know eliminated any junk food that first week. I had a, a handful of off-plan meals, some ice cream and some pizza and burgers and all that stuff. I got all that stuff out of my system. So now it's all about clean food. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing here. Pre-workout meal is going to be 280 grams of white rice. So I'm gonna do white rice, chicken breast. For my fats, I'm gonna do 20 grams of added uh, nut butter here. And then I'm gonna do 100 grams of banana. So full banana is usually about 100 grams. So I'll get that worked up right now. But yeah, honestly, I am just taking this day by day. I'm super excited. And, um, you know, I really feel like I'm in a place that I can improve. I mean, I have three months until the Olympia. So I think I'm in a place that I can genuinely make some progress and bring an improved package. But I think that doesn't happen if we don't stay completely on track. You know what I mean? I think it's, it's easy right now. I'm in shape. I could, I could probably get away with certain things, but I just have to remind myself that you only get one shot at an Olympia debut, and uh, I really want to make an impact. And it starts right here in the kitchen. It's the most important part. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna pull this off and cut it into bite-sized pieces like I like. Are you doing the pan fry method? Or oh that, yeah, of yeah. course, no, definitely. Those are the things that uh, I'm carrying through. I haven't really reverted back to like that off season setting where you don't really care about that stuff. I still care very much about my food and how it's prepared. <laughs> All right, 280 grams of rice, 220 grams of chicken breast, now I'm gonna get this on the pan. Like I said, I like to reheat my stuff on the pan. Just turns out a little bit better. Kind of add a little crisp to the rice. And personally, I just think you get a better flavor. And right now I'm really enjoying my food. So I wanna do everything I can to kind of enhance the flavor of these meals because there's no cookies after the meal. This is, this is uh, the meal and dessert right here. Avocado oil. There we go. Maybe that was too much. So I got these pans. These are the hex clad pans. I posted them on my story and I know a lot of you guys were asking me what I thought of the hex clad pans. Honestly, I'm fucking brutal with my pans. I heat the shit out of them. I beat the shit out of them. And I cook six times a day in my pans. And these seem to be holding up. So they're still nonstick. They're still doing well. I think I've had them for about, I don't know, six weeks or so. And I usually just order like the t fowl pans off of Amazon. And these are a little more expensive a little more bougie and I think, think it's paying off. So, so far I'm pretty happy with these. Oh no, there's some rice. There's five grams Okay, it's there. sticky rice and it is sticking to my plate. Come on. All right, that's fine. 
Now, what I like to do is I like to compact the rice down a little bit and I make a bit of a, a rice pancake. Sear the chicken, sear the rice, flip, sear, and then we will plate and dress. Here on the rice there, a little bit of crisp and texture. That is exactly what we're looking for. I don't want to burn it, but I want to get a little bit of a crisp to it. When you're eating chicken and rice all day, it's the same texture all day. So like if you get to crisp this and you got that bite and a little bit of crunch to your food, it can make a difference. I like crave chips. Like I don't ever really crave chips, but like right now I just like a bag of Doritos would be awesome. So the nut butter, this is uh, my nut butter of choice here. What I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna microwave the nut butter so I can get it to drizzle across the food. 30 seconds, 100 grams of banana, this, I think, is gonna be about bang on 100 grams. When Jasmine does this, so she gets 100 grams of banana, she'll just take the banana and like, start ripping it and mashing it. But I, I can't do that. Like she's like, it's like mom mode, you know? Her mom would just like fucking rip a banana in pieces with her hands. I'm just, I need it evenly distributed with nice even cuts. You want a banana? Hmm. Yeah, she doesn't, she hates the bananas. If I tried to offer it to her, like here's this little sliver of banana, I'll show you. Here, Bailey, want a banana? No, while you eat it. There you go, buddy. She doesn't like banana, but she likes chicken, so I'm gonna give her a piece of chicken. Here you go, sweetie. Now, this is crucial, the even distribution of the nut butter. Bingo. I love this meal. It's one that like if I put in a client's plan, they immediately reject the idea of it. And guys don't wanna try this. But this meal right here is amazing. Give it a shot. If you haven't tried chicken, rice, banana, nut butter, give it a go. You'll love it. Pre-workout of the day is gonna be the Pre-HD Ultra. If you guys have noticed, I'm a little chatty today. And I'm talking a little fast. That's because I did two scoops of this stuff. And uh, yeah, I feel good and stimulated, ready to rock. And then I'm going to use the Intra HD. This is our Intra workout product. Right now I don't have any Intra carbs. This is our carbless product. So this is just gonna be like an energy, endurance and uh, hydration formula. Wonderful product. If you guys want to go to hdmuscle.com, use my code SHIRE10, get yours. Stay hydrated, stay stimulated. All right guys, so as promised, here we are at the gym. I'm just at that point now where I'm actually diving in 100% into my training. The last two weeks, I've really just taken the time to kind of let my body, you know, acclimate, get, you know, back to homeostasis. And uh, it's just been like a lot of uh, more volume work, definitely backed up on load. But right now I'm ready to kind of attack the logbook and get back to how I'm usually training on a weekly basis. So right now I'm gonna be kind of building out a new split. I'm gonna be doing things pretty similarly, but I have body parts I wanna bring up. Now, my back is one of those body parts. It's always been something that I'm trying to bring up. And I think we did so. Absolutely, into Chicago, I, my back did improve. But coming into those final weeks of the show, as we're driving down really hard, cardio's high, food's low, if you're gonna sacrifice any tissue or fullness, it's gonna be in that newest tissue. So for me, that was my back. So I, I noticed as we got into those final weeks, I didn't have the same pop and fullness throughout my back that I had prior. So that's definitely gonna be my focus moving forward is to continue to build on that and uh, build up fullness and hopefully put on some more tissue back there. And then aside from that, just continuing to grow my legs. Now, some of you might know, I did break my leg. I think it's been about 10 years now, but it was years and years of, of recovery. It's a very serious leg break. So there was about three years there where I was full tilt training upper body and I wasn't able to train lower body really at all. Intermittently, um, I had periods of time where I was able to train my legs. Um, but yeah, I mean this, my upper body has like a couple year head start on my legs. So there's always something that I've been playing catch up with. Again, I'm happy with what my legs look like. I think I'm symmetrical. I don't think that my legs are really lagging, but I know they can be better. So essentially I want two leg days and two back days. Today, I will do some hamstring, direct hamstring work, a stiff leg deadlift, some back work, but then with that, I'm also gonna uh, implement a leg press. And I'm pretty excited. I get to kind of throw out the old logbook and start a new logbook. 
and start fresh. And that right now, as far as I'm concerned, starts today with this session. So I'll quit yammering away and quit blabbering and we'll get to training. Let's go. Movement one, I'm gonna start here with this close grip pull down. As you guys see, it's not like a V handle. It's a little bit wider, like a neutral handle. Kind of allow me to dig into the lats a little bit more. So that's where I'll start, get good and warmed up, and then we'll fire into our deadlift movements. I just find I connect the movement a little bit better, and it's also just a little bit safer. So I'm gonna work up all these two sets here, just a top set and then a back off set, and then we'll get right into some hamstring stuff. Back off, 180, and we'll do one more set. Jasmine's working in with me. Her legs are so big that I don't have to adjust the, <laughs> or mine are so small. Okay. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you. I felt good. All right, pull downs done. Let's go. Just practicing. Just, just practicing. <laughs> good, Jess. Keep nailing them. Yep, all you. Couple more. Good. Let's get another one. Big pull. Finish it. Good. <clears throat> All right. Train with Dorian. He mentioned something about like a little external rotation to make sure the femur aligns directly with the pads and we're not internally rotating at the hips and uh, you know, pointing those toes out, just trying to keep the feet aligned and straight, femur directly on the pad. And when you do that, I'm getting a lot more engagement on the inside of my hamstrings. So it's allowed me to kind of hit a portion of my hamstrings that I don't feel like I was completely nailing before. Obviously I, I uh, have done things like a lying dumbbell hamstring curl where I'm clamping the dumbbell and I would get that feeling out of that movement, but I don't think I could quantify exactly why, but uh, that little cue actually helped me quite a bit. So something you guys can be conscious of, a little external rotation, make sure the femur aligns directly with the pad, opposed to internally rotated out. Um, give it a shot and see if you can feel the difference.
Fuck. Holy shit. Those are hard. I kind of forgot. I have this loaded in the length and range, so that's in the bottom of the movement. So as I'm doing the partials, that's where it's the heaviest. Shit, that was hard. All right, cool. One and done. We're out of here. I've been pulling off the floor week after week through the entire prep. I think what I'm gonna do now, that we're kind of starting this fresh page in the logbook, 12 week stint until the Olympia, I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna do a paused RDL. So I'm gonna pull from the floor and then I'll pause with those plates half inch, inch from the floor, sit there for a second and pull back up. Now it's just a really challenging way to do these, this movement very challenging on the erectors, glutes, hamstrings, whole posterior chain. Just uh, one way to make this even harder. And I really enjoy it. So it's gonna be a, a fun way to kind of shift what I've been doing and find a new way to progress. Because frankly, you know, after you do something the same for week after week after week after week, it'd be a bit, a bit monotonous. So I'm excited to kind of take a stab at these paused RDLs and progress. So not quite sure what all I'm doing today. Work my way up slowly. See how I feel and uh, go from there. Ooh, that's feel good. Those are hard. Something felt weird. Not quite sure what that was, but something in like my groin area fell off. Something told me to shut that down, so I shut it down. I don't know what that was. It's kind of weird. I'm okay, but yeah. Fuck, that was discouraging, so it felt good. I'm not quite sure what was going on there. I just felt a little pressure as I was pausing in the hole in a place I didn't want to feel pressure. Um, so I backed off the weight a little bit. I'm going to take another stab at, at uh, another set. Um, but honestly, I feel perfectly fine. Nothing happened. It just, something was telling me to shut things down. So I, I just listened to my body and, and uh, called the set. A little disappointing because I was pretty excited about, you know, ripping into a hard deadlift set. But um, I just got to play it smart. And uh, I don't really know exactly what that was, but I feel fine right now. So I'm gonna take another stab at this. I dropped the quarters on each side, so pull 50 pounds off, and then I'll take a run at this and see how it feels. The idea was a top set and back off set here. Obviously you guys seen what happened to the top set. I don't really know what that was. 
but back off set went well. So I'm gonna take it as a win and move on. All right, so like I said, I do want to grow my quads. So I'm using this as like a secondary leg day as well. So I'm gonna do this single leg uh, pendulum Rogers hip press. So that'll be my one quad movement for today. Had the lying ham curl, the stiff leg, deadlift for hamstrings, and then this will be for quads. And then the rest will just be uh, back movements. Well, I'm actually gonna do adductors as well, but whatever, we'll get there. This will be the next movement, single leg hip press. good but bad but a bad good a good bad just burns find that like in the beginning of a prep 18 weeks off cardio goes from like 20 minutes to 30 minutes to 30 minutes feels like forever and then it 12 weeks out like 30 minutes feels like nothing and then at the end of the show you're doing 90 minutes oh, two forever, hours ever, ever. that's long but then it's like then you like have a day where they're like go do 35 minutes of cardio and you're like I can't believe this ever felt long to me <laughs> I can't believe this is ever hard like fucking blink and 35 minutes is over. So right now is the hardest phase to be like working up in cardio, but it's exciting. It's fun. Fun, yeah, it's real fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't trust you with my head. Take them. Oh, why, no, no, she doesn't trust me with that, but no. I lost her old ones, she took my new ones, I found her old ones, she kept my new ones. Now I can't use her old ones. Her new ones. Can't use, Can't new use ones. my new ones that are her new ones because where are your old ones? I, where are exactly. I <laughs> lost them. I have no idea. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. That's it for this leg press. I'm just going to do one set. A few reasons. I have a full leg day. So I just trained quads on Thursday. Today's Monday. So this is just like some additional frequency. Now, as we progress into this little stretch out of the show, I may implement more volume if I feel I can recover from it. But my biggest consideration here is like overuse of the joint. I find if I overwork my knee joint, I get a lot of inflammation in my knees and then I have knee issues. So usually if I can get away with like an extra set of leg press throughout the week and my knees don't hurt, it's like that's a win and I'll take it. Um, but yeah, so we'll build up from here if I can accommodate it. But for now, just one hard set, single leg and moving on. Bitty. Catch you on the, the flippity dippity. I'll see you at home. You going straight home? Yeah. Okay, love you. Here I am, spread eagle on the adductor machine. I'm working in some additional adductor work in on this day as well. Again, just one and done. Gonna let her rip and then move on and finish with some back movements. We got a 
somebody deadlifting over there and it's scary. You know how it is. Sometimes there's a guy doing scary deadlifts in the gym. Just one set here with a drop. So typically if I'm just gonna do one set on something, I like to add an intensifier, not always, but in this case, worked up to that top set and then did a drop set and now we'll move on. If I lose these, I'm in big, big, big trouble. Next movement is gonna be this chest support T-bar. I'm gonna be holding onto these wider handles, driving the elbows behind me and uh, really trying to focus on the upper back here. So. What I'm gonna be thinking about is scapular retraction. So I wanna get those elbows as far behind me as possible and really focus on retracting the scapula. I'm not tucking the elbows in to the side and nailing the lats. I'm really gonna let them drift up and into the upper back. So that'll be my focus here. Do two sets here and uh, this thing's a little wobbly. Let me see if I can. good so I think a lot of people when they do like a wide grip or upper back focus t-bar see a lot of people focusing too much on the width of their hands and it's not necessarily the width of your hand that dictates what part of your back's being worked it's all elbow path so if you guys notice my elbows are flared out elbows are going behind me and if I was holding too wide it just limits the range of motion so it actually limits the amount of contraction I can get and the amount of scapular retraction I can get out of the movement. So if you notice, I'm holding these wide handles, but I'm holding right about shoulder width. So I'm able to fully drive those elbows behind me. Now, where I would see a little bit of diminishing return is if I was too narrow and I'd be seeing that bend in the elbow to where you might be seeing more bicep, more elbow flexion than you do see scapular retraction. So here would be like scapular retraction and here is elbow flexion and nailing the biceps. So when you're thinking about this, don't focus on width, focus on elbow drive. Oh boy. It's heavy. Felt good though. I was fucking shaking, shaking like a leaf. Yeah. <sighs> 
<clears throat> okay, so that's it for the chest for T-bar. That's like my one upper back specific movement for this workout. Now, the way I look at it, I get a lot of upper back work on the deadlift as well, through the traps, rhomboids. So, upper back T-bar. Now I'm gonna move to this leverage row. Now with the, with the leverage row, I'm gonna hike the seat up and I'm really gonna pull low and finish off digging into the lats. So I really love this machine, super smooth, very good lat row and one that I can use both hands on that works really well. Because a lot of times these row machines are just best if you use them unilaterally single arm and don't really work that well with you know a bilateral movement. So this is one that I can use with both arms and I really, really enjoy it. I want to externally rotate, really get the elbows dug into the sides, keep a neutral spine and really pull in, keep the elbows tucked to the side, bam, and nail the lats. Full stretch, bam, full contraction. Just keeping those elbows tucked in to the side, not allowing myself to be here, but I'm tucked in, bam, in the lats. And one thing you won't see me doing is like pulling off the seat and leaning back and arching a bunch. Just keeping a neutral spine, tall through the chest, but spine is neutral. Bam, dig into the lats. I really like to think of myself being fixed, that spine being fixed, and then the muscles stretching and wrapping around that spine. So I don't really want to be fluid with it and assist in the movement. The only movement I want to see is in the muscle. I want the lats to stretch and I want the lats to contract while I stay fixed. Bam. Okay, well guys, that's it. That's it for today's back and hamstring session. So, coming on the back end of the Chicago Pro, it's Olympia prep time. So, this will be our first video of the Olympia prep series starting now, 13 weeks out. And again, I wanna bring you guys with me because I know you guys enjoyed coming through that Chicago prep and I really enjoyed everybody's support you know, the amount of love I had in those videos towards the end, that show day video, you know, the entire prep, honestly, the amount of positive feedback I got from you guys, the amount of appreciation, I value you guys so much. And I really, really can't put into words how much I appreciate that. So I want to do it again. And this one's the big show. You know, this is the Olympia. So this means fucking everything to me. And, um, I'm really excited. I feel like I have a good opportunity to improve upon what we brought to Chicago. And I've got, you know, a little over 12 weeks, almost 13 weeks to do it. And I don't plan on wasting a fucking day. So I appreciate you guys watching. Stick around because we're just getting started. 
We'll catch you on the next one.